Hi my lovely viewers, how are you guys doing today? Today I have um, an update for you guys. When flight service called the other day, um, she left a voicemail and it was basically like, this is flight service daily ops. We are trying to reach flight attendant Cheryl Ott. I need to get in touch with you right away. Please call me back. We are open 24 hours a day with a phone number. So I'm like, oh crap, what is that? She didn't even tell me what it was about. So I gave them a call back and she let me know that I was exposed to COVID-19 on one of my flights. It was unfortunately the flight from Charlotte to Seattle, which is a six hour flight. We did go into the aisle and do a service. We only do like actual beverage service on flights that are more than 2,200 miles. And that one was normally we just hand out at the door um, a bag. It has a cookie or a pretzel. It's got water and it's got like a hand or a sanitizing wipe that you can wipe your seat down with. And we just do that and then we just walk through the aisle and pick up trash and check for seat belts and whatever else we have to do during the flight. But we're typically not in the aisle very long. And this flight happened to be one long enough where we did a service. We were on that airplane for six hours with somebody that tested positive for COVID-19. And the person was sitting back um, kind of close to my jump seat. And it would have been the row that I actually waited on as well when we did the service. And so she asked me if I had any symptoms and I said, now that you mention it, like, you know how you just are so busy during the day, you're doing things around the house and you don't even think about it. But I'm like, I actually have had kind of a runny nose today and a little bit of a sore throat. I actually had a headache almost all day yesterday and I'm the kind of person, I don't ever get headaches. I mean, I just never get headaches. I get other kind of aches, you know, body aches, but I never get headaches. And I was like, shoot, I've had a headache all day. And so I let my husband know, he's actually in, was in Honolulu. Um, and he went on and scheduled appointments for me and the two kids to go get COVID tested. So we went this morning, hopefully we'll know. Um, they usually say three to four days, but the last time um, when me and the kids went and got tested, um, we found out in two days. And I actually went to a different testing site this time. So hopefully we'll know in two days. And I also had to move um, the uh, appraisal. We were supposed to have it tomorrow, which is Friday. And I obviously don't want someone coming in the house if possibly me and the kids all have COVID. Um, so I changed that till Monday. Hopefully I'll have results by then. I also had to um, get in touch with Alex's mom and let her know that um, I was exposed. And you know, he stayed the night here Saturday night. And Hudson let his girlfriend know because she came over a couple times, I think, since I've been home. And um, I was supposed to go to work tomorrow. They actually, you know, they went ahead and removed me from that trip just in case. So they give you, I guess, 10 days from exposure. So I was exposed on the 7th and they give me 10 days. Um, and then I can go back and work, which I think my next trip will be on the 19th, I believe it is. 19th and 20th. Um, I go to Nashville and do something else. I don't know. But, um, so that was my flight service update. I also want to kind of elaborate on my story I told you guys the other day, because I don't want you to think that we literally just have people kicked off the plane for no reason at all. So this girl, she's not a girl, she's a woman. She's probably, I don't know, 28 or something like that. And her husband, um, they got on the airplane and um, they had a pet in the cabin which is a dog or cat that has to stay in the carrier and has to go under the seat. And she walked on the airplane with the dog on a leash and the number three who was standing at the door, she had already looked up the animal situation because she had just gotten bit by a dog on the airplane. So she's extra cautious now, making sure she knows what kind of animals we're gonna have. Um, sometimes there's, emotional support animals, which I'm not sure if we are still keeping that. I feel like the FAA maybe is doing away with that, but they're animals that can come and be in the owner's lap or on the floor. Um, but pets in the cabin have to be in a carrier and they have to stay zipped. And she literally had just gotten bit by a dog. And so she informed the lady, your dog needs to go in its case. It needs to be zipped up and it needs to go under the seat. And the girl just flat out said, no, my dog's not going under the seat. So they started out kind of having issues with each other. So then, like I said, she was doing her walkthrough. Um, and I just wanna let you guys know, the commercial airlines were governed by the federal government. There is a whole book of FAR, Federal Aviation Regulations, that are put out and, you know, the FAA is who we're, you know, who is responsible for us to make sure we're following all these federal laws. I mean, if you're on an airplane, number one, we are a private business. We're allowed to refuse service to people. 
And number two, if you're on a plane, you have got to follow federal regulations. And that's just it. So things like when we're walking through the aisle and we tell you to put your seat back up, your tray table up, put your you know bag underneath the seat for takeoff. The reason why we're telling you these things is so you're not blocking your exit or somebody else's exit if the plane crashes and we have to evacuate. Like those are the flat out reasons. You don't want to have anything impede your evacuation if you have to get off the plane quickly. So flat out, we have to enforce these rules. Like we are not allowed to just go, oh, I'm just gonna let that person slide because you know, she's nice. No, anyway. So she's walking down the aisle, you know, before takeoff, you have to get you know, the plane, the cabin ready for departure. So the girl, like I said, her stuff was everywhere and her purse was on the seat, which it can't stay there. Her stuff was blocking her exit. Her dog was totally blocking the aisle and the carrier was unzipped. So she told the girl, you need to put your stuff under the seat. Your purse has to go on the floor. And the girl goes, no, I'm not going to do that. My purse costs $3,000 and it is not going on the floor. <laughs> and so she like asked her a couple times and she flat out said no. So she comes back and says, you know, Cheryl or Mary was in the back with me. No, Maria. Mary was in the front. You know, I don't know what you guys want to do about this, but this girl has her stuff everywhere. She flat out told me she's not going to move it. So that's when I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll go up behind you and then I will tell her all the same things. So literally I did. She let me put one of the bags in the overhead bin. I informed her her dog had to be zipped and it had to go under her seat. She told me no. And she had put her purse on the floor. So I took the purse and pushed it a little bit. So it went underneath the seat. And while I'm standing there, she takes the purse and moves it back out into the aisle blocking it. And I took the purse <laughs> and I pushed it again. And that's when I went up front and I told um, Terry, who's up there, I'm like, this isn't going to work. This girl's not listening to us at all. We are going to have her on the flight and she's not going to be compliant with any of our instructions, probably the whole flight. Like she just is sitting there and her husband is oblivious this whole time because he has passed out like this. Like totally passed out drunk, just which you're not allowed to be intoxicated on airplane either. You're not allowed to swear. You're not allowed to be intoxicated and you have to be compliant of flight attendant regulations. So this girl, her husband's drunk. She's totally just flat out telling us no. And so that's when we call the captain. And Mary, who is my friend, I've known her for, gosh, probably 15 years. She's working the flight and I guess she's like a peacekeeper. So she goes, no, wait, 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 I'll go talk to her. So she goes back and talks to her. And like I said, she's the peacekeeper and she was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe give her one more chance to listen. And then she came up and she's like, no, she needs to get off the plane. So we're like, okay, we called the captain. We told him this girl will not listen to us. Her boyfriend, we thought he was a boyfriend until I saw they had the same last name. He's passed out drunk. We need to go back to the gate because here we are, we're just taxiing. We're in, you know, had left the DFW uh, jet bridge and we're just taxiing to get in line to go take off. And we're like, no, we have to go back. So unfortunately on this flight as well, there was this really adorable family that was sitting in the back of the airplane and it was a mom, a dad, um, a baby, a tiny baby that was so cute, a little girl who's about 18 months old and a little boy who's say four. And that poor little toddler, the 18 month old, was having the hardest time. You could tell she was overtired. And um, if we could have just gone and take off, you know, took off, we would have turned the lights down to low. I feel like she would have finally just fallen asleep, which is what she really needed to do because she was overtired, she was fussing the whole time. And so it took us a while to taxi. So we're taxiing, I mean, I think it was about 50 minutes. Um, that we're taxiing because Dallas is huge. If you've ever been to the DFW airport, it is huge. So, but you know, we taxied to get out to like getting towards the runway and then we had to go get another gate and taxi back there. It'd been like 50 minutes. We had to have the lights on bright and this little girl is throwing a fit. I feel so bad for the family. You know, the mom is just embarrassed. And um, literally we go to the gate, we get this person off the flight. I thought she was gonna throw a fit and cause problems, but, um, the agent came on the plane. I think it was probably like a kind of like a supervisor or something came on. They got their stuff. They got off the airplane. And then we left again. And we finally were able to turn the lights down. And this girl is still kind of fussing. And this guy, this is how people are. This older man <laughs> um, asks if he can move because this girl's throwing a fit and he doesn't want to hear it. And he goes, actually, that's why I thought we were going back to the gate to have them removed. I'm like, we don't have families removed 
because they're babies or crying. Like, what is wrong with you? Um, but this is the funny thing. This poor mom, I told you, she was having a hard time. And um, when the captain came on and made the announcement, we apologize, but we have to go back to the gate. We have a passenger that's not being compliant and we're going to have to have them removed. The mom looked back at me with like these big eyes, like, oh, is it us? I'm like, oh no, 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 it's not you guys. No, there's nothing. You're, you're doing fine. Everything's okay. So the poor mom thought we were kicking her off the airplane. So anyway, that's my long story. Um, me and the kids went and got tested this morning. Hopefully we'll know soon. And like, I had some symptoms yesterday. I don't know. Maybe when people say, oh, you've been exposed to COVID, your mind can make you feel like you don't feel good. I don't know. I'm hoping for the best. Um, and I will definitely keep you guys updated, but that's what the flight service phone call was about. So bye, my lovely viewers. I hope you guys have a great day and um, hope you enjoyed a tale from the plane. <laughs> I'm sure I've got a ton of stories I could tell about being on the airplane, but that was one that just happened most recently. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye, my lovely viewers.